Well, the country's largest economy and most populous province has charted its deficit reduction course. And with a federal election coming this fall, you can count on Premier Doug Ford's budget figuring prominently in federal political campaigns. There were Trudeau government MPs in Toronto today for comment. And tomorrow morning, a handful of federal ministers will be available to talk to reporters. For their reactions, I'm joined now by three MPs from the different federal parties. Peter Fragicastos is the Liberal MP for London North Centre. John Broussard is a Conservative MP for Barry Innisfil. And Peter Julian is the NDP's Deputy Finance Clinic Critic. Thanks, all three of you. Thanks for joining us. Great to be here. Thanks, Great to Mark. be here. Now, I know, as I mentioned, I mean, I anticipate there will be much talk about the Ontario government's uh, budget. I want to start off with the Conservative on the panel, uh, because, John Broussard, I remember you telling us a few months ago, many months ago, that you were actually campaigning uh, for the provincial Conservatives. I know right. you're paying co close attention to this. How do you think the uh, Ford government's budget is going to play out in federal politics? Well, I certainly uh, don't think it was the shock and awe of austerity that uh, the federal Liberals were salivating over or hoping for, for sure. Um, I think they also struck a balance between what was important to the people of Ontario with respect to services, namely health care and education, but they also uh, created a path forward uh, with respect to balancing the budget. And so as it relates to the federal budget, uh, you know, we went through 15 years of structural debt and deficits in Ontario. We're certainly on that path here federally because they are effectively using the same playbook that Kathleen Wynne used, except they're using it at the federal level of structural debt and deficits. And so Canadians have one shot to get this right in October to make sure that we don't end up in a situation like Ontario is in with uh, $13.5 billion of debt and uh, over $300 billion, or sorry, $13.5 billion of deficit and $340 billion of debt, Martin. Okay, Peter, I want to go back to the Liberal on the panel. For you, uh, Peter Fragiscatos, Fratis, uh, what will you say uh, the Conservatives federally are going to be pointing to the Ontario deficit reduction plan and they're going to say your federal budget, I mean, we've had all of the Trudeau government budget deficits uh, and there's not been a plan to get out or to eliminate the federal deficit. Uh, is that going to put you on the spot because they'll be comparing you with the Ontario deficit reduction plan? Martin, budgets are ultimately a statement of values. And uh, if you look at each of the budgets that our government has presented, whether it's the one just now in 2019 or the previous ones, altogether, these are budgets that invest. Uh, what we have in Ontario today is exactly what we'd see with a sheer government, a budget that cuts, cuts, cuts. And so if you look at the budget that Mr. Ford has presented, there is cuts to student assistance, there is cuts to the environment, there's cuts to community and social services, which includes children's services. And under that, you'll know that there's autism cuts that, uh, that have been made and that will be made in the coming months and years. Uh, in addition, the Department of Indigenous Services in Ontario is seeing a 50% spending cut reduction. But most of the cuts, in fact, Martin, were carried out long ago. Uh, the Ford government has not been shy. In fact, the list is slow, uh, so long, you'll indulge me for a moment, Martin. But here's what the Ford government has cut since coming to power previous, prior to today. Uh, so we're talking about uh, cuts to autistic programming. They rolled back the sex education curriculum to 1998. That's when Netscape was popular, by the way. They cut 700 plus green projects. They cut the budget for school repairs. They reduced pharmacare availability. Okay, all right. No, but, so okay, but so to be long, fair, I don't want to go. Yeah, I don't want to go yeah. into a long list. But I mean, the other side I'm of the not, equation. I'm only halfway right. through. The other side of the equation, yeah, though, is my question. Much. That yeah. is, what do you make, though, of the idea that we are look at least power surge? We just lost everything. We had a uh, power surge here too, Mark. Did you? Oh, yeah. oh wow! I've lost all the lights. Are you? There we go. You're back there. Okay, we could. Okay, I will. Why don't we retake it with my rude interruption of Peter? <laughs> that was wonderful. I th we all lost power, eh? Yeah. Well, okay. We didn't lose power. We had a flicker. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, okay. So, okay, but Peter, Peter, I would, uh, I'll jump in, though. I mean, to cut the list in half, the other side of the question, though, was, um, is that obviously conservatives are going to be pointing to the fact that there is a plan to get out of deficit, and that is an important economic principle. How are you going to answer to that? Well, in Ontario, the deficit, the actual number, as you'll know, is a matter of debate. When Mr. Fideli uh, presented his fall economic update, and Mr. Ford, of course, backed him up on this, uh, the, uh, the numbers were, in fact, cooked. Uh, and if they weren't cooked, there's certainly arguments about what the actual number is. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that the Ford government in Ontario is doing precisely what the Scheer government would do federally. 
cut in almost every single area that matters to Canadians. Uh, Canadians can be reassured that this government has their back. Okay. We're right. focusing on the middle class. We're putting in place programming that supports the middle class. That's how you create growth in countries. Okay, I want to go to Peter, uh, Peter Julian on behalf of the federal NDP. How do you think this will play out? And uh, what do you make of the Ontario, Canada's most populous <coughs> province? What do you make of the, the budget plan in Ontario and how it will play out in the federal uh, level? Well, well it's a, a budget for fat cats. There's, there's uh, no doubt about that. The spending actually increases. Uh, but what we're seeing, in the same way that with the federal Liberals, uh, we just see massive handouts to very wealthy corporate CEOs. We've seen that in the Liberal budgets. We're now seeing this with the Doug Ford Conservative budget. What, what both parties fail to understand is that the, the public, uh, regular families, are really hurting. And so for Doug Ford uh, to, to slash services to children, to slash uh, ser services that, that help students and, and provide supports for families, to slash health care and education, this just mean-spirited and cruel at the same time as he seems to uh, have a real inclination to give lots of money to the, to the fat cats. And, and so this is where I think there, there's a, just a huge discrepancy where the, between where the Liberals and Conservatives are going and where most Canadians are, where they see uh, the struggle every day, even to put food on the table, keep a roof over your head, uh, that families are more and more in debt. And with these governments in their mean-spirited approaches, what they're doing is the contrary to what most Canadians and most Ontarians want to see. Okay, John Broussard, you, you started your initial comments by saying this is not going to be what the Liberals and NDP had predicted. This is a more reasonable, balanced budget, uh, and it's a budget that heads towards eliminating uh, the deficit. I think um, they proved that. Okay, what about, though, I mean, you're going to hear, and you've already heard from your two federal counterparts, uh, you're going to hear accusations that, you know, Ontario uh, budget, for example, slashed by 50%, the uh, budget of the Ministry for Indigenous Affairs, uh, massive cuts to the Environment Ministry in Ontario. In Ontario. Uh, you're going to be very much attacked on that uh, on behalf of your provincial cousins. Well, I think if you look at uh, the reality of the situation, what the Ford government did today was protect the services that were vital uh, to Ontarians, being health care and education. And uh, they made it very clear that that's what they were going to do. They also made it very clear that they were going to create a path towards a balanced budget, a balanced budget, a balanced budget that uh, I'll remind everybody is not foreseen until 2041 here federally. So the reality is that when these structural deficits and debt take place, take root, uh, like we're seeing here in Canada, uh, you know, taxes are going to go up and some of those services uh, will have to be realigned. And so uh, today's uh, budget, I think, uh, I think, you know, at least from what I'm seeing, the initial reaction, has gone over very well with the people of Ontario, and there's been some very positive reaction to it. Okay, Peter Frederiskatos, uh, how much is the Ontario budget and a possible victory by Jason Kenney uh, of the United uh, Conservative Party in Alberta next week, how much is this actually going to help the federal Liberals? Because many people have suggested you would love to campaign and make your targets uh, governments in Ontario and Alberta. Uh, we're squarely focused on the middle class. We're squarely focused on low-income Canadians that are working hard to join the middle class, Martin. In fact, my friend uh, John talks about deficits. Most of the deficits that Canada has seen have come under conservative governments. We're talking about creating jobs. In fact, 900,000 jobs have been created since 2015. We're talking about the Canada Child Benefit that puts more money into 9 out of 10 Canadian families' pockets. We're talking about making sure that middle-income folks have tax cuts, and we've delivered that as well. Uh, this is what, again, the Ford government has done. In addition to what I just mentioned, they cut affordable housing spending. They cut the French language commissioner. They fired the chief scientist. They canceled plans for a French language university. They cut mental health care funding by $1.34 billion. They have cut supports for the visually impaired, Martin. They have, pla they have plans to fire 34 100 okay. teachers and to reduce teacher salaries so are you making, as well. Are you making my point, though, in the sense that you have provincial governments who are going to make your case against conservative governments? You, you're now being able to rhyme off things that have been cut in provincial governments that are dealing with deficits. That's exactly what Mr. Ford has carried out. And as I said before, that is exactly the agenda that Andrew Scheer has in mind for the country. We're going to invest in the country. We're going to stand by Canadians. Canada has seen record growth. Uh, very low unemployment, in fact, historically low unemployment rates, uh, unemployment rates that we haven't seen since the 
1970s. We are seized with a middle class agenda and we're delivering. Okay, but as your colleague to the right of you said, uh, no plan to get out of deficit until 2041. I want to turn to Peter the Julian. The GDP ratio, Martin, is we'll in fact down. on the decline. Okay. And look at what uh, the IMF and Christine Lagarde has said about our government. We're, okay, setting, we're setting an example for uh, progressive granted. governments around the world. Granted, on the deficit issue, I want to go to Peter Julian. Peter Julian, as you are well aware in the last election, the whole issue of deficit spending was a big one and it was a very a very costly one for your former leader, uh, Thomas Mulcair, because he was, he was pitching fiscal responsibility. Uh, your position when it comes to deficit reduction in this upcoming election? Well, the, the NDP has always been, and this is the Federal Ministry of Finance that tells us with the fiscal period returns that they've been uh, covering for decades, the NDP and NDP governments have always been the most responsible in terms of balancing budgets and paying down debt. That's, and, and we've done that by maintaining and enhancing services. The, the way we do this is by not giving, shoveling money out the door to the fat cats. And this is what we've seen with the Liberals. Uh, they gave $12 million to Loblaws for new fridges. They're giving $15 billion in terms of Trans Mountain, and they paid a billion dollars too much for the pipeline. And when we see the kind of preferences that they're giving to SNC-Lavalin, you see how liberal corruption has really permeated the entire government. And then you see Doug Ford in, in Ontario uh, doing much the same thing, increasing spending, which is what he's done. Well, he cuts by children, indigenous, communities, cuts in the environment, cuts in education, cuts in health care. That's not a balanced approach at all. So, so what the NDP will okay. be talking about is making sure that we actually establish a fair tax system so that we have the resources to make investments in families. And when we have the lowest effective corporate tax rate among all industrialized countries because of tax havens and tax loopholes, I, I think that's something that more and more Canadians want to see a government showing leadership and tackling. And okay. that's what they'll get with the NDP and with Jagmeet Singh. In a word, would you have a date? Are you going to establish a date by which you would hope to balance the budget? Uh, what we will be doing is making sure that we have a fair tax system in place and that we're making investments for regular families. And that is our priority. And of course, because NDP, the NDP governments historically have always been the best to, to balance budgets and pay down debt, uh, we'll be doing that after we've taken okay. care of regular Canadians. Last question in, in 10 seconds, John Brassard, will you have a date that, that you will commit to or you can suggest to Canadians in the upcoming election about by when you would uh, eliminate the deficit? Well, Andrew uh, Scheer has said that he will look at balancing the budget within two years, but uh, you know, I hate this answer, Martin, but it's an answer we gotta give. These guys are spending like drunken sailors, and so we're we're, we're gonna have to Where's we're gonna have, change we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna have, have to make ma we're gonna have to look SNC at the budget to make sure. That's but Andrew is committed to within two years. Okay, well listen, I want to thank all three of you to, for speaking with us. And something tells me we will revisit this issue as it uh, not just the Ontario budget, but the uh, the whole budget issue. We'll be talking about this over the next two uh, few weeks and months. Thanks for speaking with us. Thanks for having us. Thank Martin. you very much. Thank you, Martin.